In Arabic, whenever you mention the name of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, we say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But as all Muslims should know, the word salla means to pray. But then how is it possible that we say Sallallahu? How is that possible? And what is even more interesting is the ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ So, what exactly is going on here? And who's praying here? And the answer is quite simple. Context. In the context of the Qur'an, words may have a linguistic meaning or al ma'na al which you will find in a dictionary. But the same word could have one or several meanings related to sharia, which we call shari meaning, or in Arabic, al ma'na al shari which you will find explained in source books of fiqh, aqidah, and other branches related to Islam. So, when reading the Qur'an, which one should we understand then? Well, since one of the main purposes of the Qur'an is to learn and follow the rulings of Allah, we should always first assume the shari meaning, or meanings, unless there is a reason to think otherwise. And at the end of the day, context and other grammatical elements can show which meaning is intended in this position. So, for example, the word al-jannah could mean garden, but it could also mean paradise, which is Allah's reward to believers after the Day of Judgment. So, when Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ Would the word al-jannah here mean garden or paradise? Well, here obviously we should understand paradise because it is in the context of the reward for those who believe. But then in this ayah, Allah says, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ Well, here, we should understand that جَنَّتَهُ means garden, his garden, because the meaning of his paradise doesn't make sense and is therefore not the intended meaning. And the same thing applies on so many other words in the Qur'an, like النار, الزكاة, البعث, النشور, and الصلاة, which we're going to highlight more and explore its different meanings in the Qur'an. As you should understand by now, الصلاة should have a shari meaning and a linguistic meaning. The linguistic meaning is supplication. But that is not the first meaning that we should assume when we read the Qur'an. Instead, we should prioritize the shari meaning. And the most famous shari meaning for this word is the one that every Muslim should know about, which is the act of prayer to Allah done five times a day. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ But this is not the only shari meaning for this word. So applying the meaning of prayer to every mention of salah is incorrect and will cause misunderstandings. Because there are several meanings to this word in the Qur'an and not just one. So what other shari meaning for this word are there? Well, first of all, salah could mean dua and istighfar, which is the meaning we observe in this ayah. وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ So the word salah here means 
doing dua and istighfar for them and not to pray to them because that is not the intended meaning. Another meaning for salah is reciting the Quran, which we see in this ayah. وَلَا تَجْهَرْ بِصَلَاتِكَ وَلَا تُخَافِتْ بِهَا And the word salah in this context refers to the portion of reciting the Qur'an during prayer. Salah could even mean the place where prayer is performed, like in this example. لَهُدِّمَتْ صَوَامِعُ وَبِيَعُ وَصَلَوَاتُ وَمَسَاجِدُ يُذْكَرُ فِيهَا اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا And here it refers to the place of prayer for the people of the book or the Jews and Christians. And a salah could also mean praise. And blessings. And this meaning is the one used in the ayah we had heard in the beginning of this lesson. So in this ayah, it means that Allah praises the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and naturally, not pray to him. And even if we continue this ayah, we see, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So the second part of the ayah contains a command to those who believe. And in order to comply with this command, we say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Through which we ask Allah to praise Prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings be upon him Among the angels The higher group Or in Arabic Al-mala'ul a'la So from this We understand that context is very important In understanding the Quran Even when it comes to words that all Muslims know Like as-salah but then, how can we differentiate? Is there a way that we can know which is which? And most importantly, who determines these meanings? Well, beside the context, there are also some grammatical signs that could give us some indications. Notice the difference between these two ayat. وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَلٌ لَهُمْ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ So what do you notice here? We notice that the same verb was used but with a different preposition which in this case helped show the meaning from pray to Allah Salli li to invoke dua and istighfar for them in salli ala. So the grammatical context of the word may also be an indication to the meaning of the word. Finally, you have to understand that these meanings were mainly understood and explained by al-mufassirun. These are the scholars who studied tafsir and also specialized in Arabic grammar in order to be able to interpret the Qur'an. And they do that with the help of authentic hadith and how the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with all of them, have understood the Qur'an at the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. So, next time you say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or peace and blessings be upon him, you would know exactly what you're saying. Thanks for watching. If you want to start your journey to learn the Tajweed of the Qur'an, you can click on this link. And if you want to understand the Qur'an in Arabic, then you should click on that link. And finally, I hope you've learned something new today, and I will see you next time.